Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Macmillan Education Iberia in Focus for Prospects, which is aimed at teachers of upper secondary or bachillerato. My name is Louise Connolly, and I'm the events manager at Macmillan Education Iberia, and I'm delighted that you could join us here this evening. I hope that you are all well. I know that this has been a very difficult year for you all, and I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you all on the amazing work, the amazing effort that you have all made to keep classes going this year, despite the tremendous difficulties encountered along the way. So well done to you all. Now, with no further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Lynn on the screen. Hi, Lynn. Good evening. Hi. How are you? Great to have you here well. with us. Good, good. I, it's I nice to be here, Louise. It, it's great. It's great. Thank you for joining us. I just want to explain a little bit. Lynn's got many years experience, I think over 30 years experience as a teacher and teacher trainer. She's been giving training sessions and courses all around the world for many years now. She has helped to develop English courses for the BBC and Fox Television. She's also uh, worked with ministries of education to develop national curricula and in the preparation and training of teacher trainers. She is also the author of several course books, including uh, one of which is the Bachillerato Prospects One Teacher's Book for Macmillan Education. So she has quite a, a, a curriculum vitae behind her, well, lots of experience. It's it fantastic. Sounds, it, sounds, it sounds good, but to be honest, uh, it's nothing like working in the classroom. You know, it's uh, that really is hard work, really hard yes. work. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. it's never been clearer than this year, no? With the, the, the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And her session today is called Countdown to Exams with Prospects. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Lynn. Okay, so we'll begin. I'll put the slides on and let's let's get going. We've a lot to get through today. Brilliant. I yeah, hope you're all ready. <laughs> Right. And just okay, before then. we start, sorry, Lynn, just before we start, I just okay. want to mention, because sometimes people ask, we will send the handout of today's session as well as yes. the recording of the event and a certificate of attendance probably next week. OK, so you will have all of that material to revisit today's session um, if there are some ideas that you've forgotten. OK, OK, over to you, Lynn. OK, well, let's get started then. Um, I chose this picture because it just reminded me of when I took exams. I remember walking into a big classroom once when I took years and years ago, I took the cap and feeling absolutely terrified. Um, and it, it kind of like remind me a little bit of how how teenagers feel when you say the word exam. So what we're going to try and do today is have a look at how we can really help them feel a little bit more confident. Uh, and I suppose in the, at the end of the day, it's believing in themselves. Um, but of course, we can't do everything. We're, we're with a teacher. Sometimes people do think that we can sort everything out. And even I think they would love us just to sit the exam for them. It would be for them. It would be absolute paradise if we did that as well. Um, but nevertheless, they're the ones that have to do it. But I spoke to a teacher, um, I mean, for this talk, I've actually spoken to quite a few teachers and quite a few uh, teenagers, especially uh, one group, which is my niece. She's going through getting ready for like selectividad, doing bachillerato, et cetera. Um, and both sides have lots to say. And I, I hope we'll be able to get through some of those comments today as well. Now, one of the teachers said this to me. Said so process is important, but we can only give marks for products. So I think in other words, what he was saying was, well, OK, you know, uh, the process of working towards the exam is important. But at the end of the day, people have to, in this case, teenagers, sit down and pass the exam themselves because we're, we just can't 
they don't get marks for process which is a shame really because i mean language learning is all about process but uh, you know that that's another story let's say uh, at the end of the day what we need to do is to try and help them get through the exam so what i'd like you to do is to think about something have your say so what do you think is the difference between product and process which do you think we need to focus on now i'd like you to just think about that and then come up with a few ideas what do you understand process to be and as I suppose in a way I've already clarified what product is. Product is, is the exam at the end of, at the end of the course or whenever whenever they take it. So a few questions. Okay, so uh, on your screen you'll see the first have you say the question. Uh, please write your comment or your answer to the question, what do you think is the difference between product and process? Which do you think we need to focus on? And we'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Yeah. It's a key question, isn't it? Because the process leads to the product. Well, yeah. exactly, exactly. The pro one of our problems is, I think, when we're in the classroom, is having time to do the process the way we feel it should be done. Because we're under an okay. awful lot of pressure, I think. It's sort of like, you know, um, it, it's it's not only hard for the teenagers or for the people that are taking the exam these kids but it's also hard for for the teacher exactly. because at the end of the day we all know we all know that process is in in many ways more important than product but uh, that's exactly. not the way the world works no it, it isn't and Sadly. we've got a couple of comments yeah okay we've got a couple Could of you... comments that uh, yes i'll tell you um one is the process is learning itself and another uh product is the result and the process is the path that takes you there which is quite uh, a nice yeah, very good putting it. very good yeah yes very good are there any more or, or could we well, move they're on? similar they're similar. They're all similar. Okay, let, let, well, let's have a look at the definition I put, because, I mean, I suppose in a way that the definitions are wonderful global de definitions of what product and process is, but what we maybe need to think about is, well, how can we transfer those into more tangible goals in the classroom? So let's just have a look at what we, what we do in the classroom as far as product and process are concerned. So product to provide practice for an, ex an exam task and to cover the syllabus. And process, the way I see it in the classroom is to develop use of an exam strategy. So, and for example, underlining key words. And I think maybe an important thing that we kind of like tend to uh, overlook sometimes is to develop, to develop sub-skills tested in an exam. For example, in, in a reading text, understanding gist. Now, obviously, we all do these things, and in the in the course book that we use, we usually there are exercise types to practice this. But I think we need to look at it in a tiny in a tiny bit more depth to see how we can help the students understand the process more, so they're less afraid of the product. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's have a closer look at product and process. So, learning with a focus on product is generally seen as a quantitative increase in our knowledge. So we we're learning more in the classroom, memorising and storing information that can be retrieved at a later date. You know, sort of like phrasal verbs, remembering the past tenses, etc. Acquiring fact skills and methods that can be re retained and used when necessary. Okay, so learning as a process forces us to focus on the quality of learning experience and the context in which learning takes place. And I think this, this, this is possibly key to this session, this idea of possibly changing the context a little bit so we get away from this idea of, of the fear of the exam. Now, let's have a look at some ideas of maybe what we could do in a lesson outline. I don't know if you all if you all kind of like follow the same format for a for a lesson plan but let's take it let's take a lesson outline where we have decided what we want to do is to work on sub skills sub skills like for speaking 
reading, listening and writing. So a possible lesson would be we'd have a lead in, we'd give them a gist task skimming, focus on sub skills, practice of sub skills, application and exam task and reflect on sub skills and exam task. Now, I think without us knowing it, that's probably the kind of lesson that we do do. But possibly what we don't do is put enough focus on equipping the learners to understand exactly what they're doing when they're focusing on sub skills, when they're applying those to the exam task. And the way we can help them is by providing them with what, what I call seek personal learning strategies and and that's what we will be looking at mostly today this way of trying to equip them to be more autonomous less dependent on how can i put this uh, getting grades throughout the year uh, and more dependent on learning strategies to get the grades when they really matter in other words pass the exam now Personal learning strategies can be divided into four main areas. Now, this is adapted from Albert Bandura's concept of self-efficacy, the idea of being an independent learner. So what he says is master experience. So when you achieve one goal, it makes you believe you can achieve another. Vicarious experiences are when you see people similar to you working hard and achieving goals you believe you can do. So basically, it's the idea of trying to help the learners see that they can achieve at least one thing well. It could be they're good at reading, they're good at listening, they're good at speaking, etc. The second point is actually seeing that your colleagues in the classroom, your classmates, are working hard. So that makes you feel that you believe you can too. The third is when the teacher influences the way you feel as a student. So verbal persuasion. So in other words, reinforcing that you can achieve your goal. And the third is the emotional and physiological states. You know, th this, this idea of feeling very depressed, feeling under stress. The other day I spoke to my niece and I, I told her about this session and I asked her about how she felt on an emotional level. And she told me she was actually physically sick sometimes, worrying about the exam. And um, it made me think how important this area is. So this, this will actually be the last area that we'll look at, but it doesn't mean that it's the least important. OK, let's let's move on and have a look at mastery experiences. So when you achieve one goal, it makes you believe you can achieve, achieve another. So it's the idea that the teacher reinforces reinforces achievement of goals through letting them see that they're actually doing something different to just sitting and doing an exam how can i put this a, a, um, focusing on the product and thinking about okay i need to be able to do this gap filler or i won't pass my exam so if we try to get them to see that they can do certain things well hopefully that will have a knock-on effect and get them thinking about well maybe i could do the other things well so what i'd like you to do is to just chat for a couple of minutes and think how can we help our students achieve their goals what what practical things can we do in the classroom to make them see that they're actually making progress Okay, so okay, just a couple of answers to that question would be fine. Yeah, that's that's fine. We'll just give people a couple of seconds to answer the question. Question is, as Lynn said, how can we help students achieve their goals? Uh, you can write in short answers. You don't need to write complete sentences. No, it's too late just... in the day to be writing. Exactly, answers. <laughs> <laughs> especially online. <laughs> Okay, and while we're doing that, um, I was going to say that, um, well, I was going to suggest something. I don't know what you think, just based on my own experience in, in the classes. What helps is, I found, is breaking things down yes, into, into stages. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, yeah. and showing, 
I, I, well, personally as well, it, it's not just for the students, but also myself, my own experience, is that when I'm faced with something very big, my initial reaction is, oh, oh I can't do it. But if I yeah. break it down into smaller pieces, as it were, steps and stages, then it becomes more more manageable and, and more more possible. Well, I think this is where the sub-skills come in, you know, breaking exactly. those down so they can identify them and it, it just helps them to see that the task isn't so enormous. Exactly. Uh, it, it's this idea that you're saying about breaking things down and making them more aware of things. Because I think sometimes yes. we're, so, we're so busy uh, focusing on product that we, we kind of like take for granted that they know certain things and they don't actually, or that we take for granted that they realize that they're doing okay and they don't, they don't realize that. They're too stressed That's sometimes to, to realize that they're, they're not doing as bad as they think they are. Okay, exactly. have we had That's any so more Yes, we in have, we have several, yes, so we have several. So the first oh, one in is, yeah, <laughs> um, self-assessment, they can see their evolution in short term, reinforcement, scaffolding, what you were just saying as well, help them understand processes and to learn from their mistakes. Another comment, ideas using examples and motivation. Another person also mentions motivation and reinforcement. Another person wow. says that by giving, by giving hints, by referring to their previous knowledge. And finally, uh -huh. again, which is repeated positive feedback great fantastic thank well, you i think this i think some of those teachers could be at the, could be me instead <laughs> you know they're, they're doing such a good job okay, i absolutely agree with all of them i mean really fantastic ideas here's a i'm going to go through a couple now of things that i do in the classroom to try and to try and help them a little bit and the first thing is because i know when, when i plan a lesson i think about my objectives or you could say goals and sometimes I, I kind of like forget that they don't realize what my goals are. So this is one of the things that I always do in the classroom before, before we even begin the lesson. So it's by the end of this lesson, you will be able to. This will help you to complete task X in exam practice, for example, in the exam. So to complete the reading comprehension, to complete a gap filler, to complete a multiple choice. And we begin with this. So we're establishing what they'll be able to do better than when they first came to class. And we're establishing how it will help them. And I think that's quite a nice way to begin a lesson. And you're also kind of like focusing in them in the right direction by bringing in that word goals, because that's that's the key word that they work towards goals, that they don't try and run before they can walk basically. Uh, another one that I sort of like plan all my lessons around is going back to this focusing on sub skills tested in the exam. By the way, in the handout, you will have a list of all the different sub skills for uh, the different skills, speaking, reading, listening and writing. Um, I couldn't fit all of them on. So I've kind of like focused just on a couple in this talk. And one of them is reading. So basically, you know, we can go through all this like gist, detailed information, meaning from context, the main idea, etc. There, there are lots of things on the, on there. There's a long, long list and it looks quite daunting. But I think maybe Louise's point about breaking things down, if, if we can show them that when they do a reading, they're actually improving their gist or improving detailed information, it will help them a lot. Um, so the benefit, some of the benefits of, of focusing an exam group on sub skills are, are if I can get my slide to move there we go are these so it allows the students to identify their goals it increases awareness of their own progress builds learner confidence and improves task performance and relates learning to work to real world usage so what we're trying to do here is is kind of like the word i think maybe the most important word in possibly that possibly there are two identify their goals so identify and increase 
their awareness of their progress. Those two are, for me, the key areas that we need to work on. Obviously, what will happen if they in become more aware of their own progress, if they can identify their goals, they will hopefully naturally become more confident because they're beginning to see what's inside that maze uh, of sort of like exam test test papers that they have to go through sometimes they're beginning to see it, it's a bit like dissecting something it's okay here are the parts i'm going to make a list of those parts and decide which ones i can deal with and which ones i can't and i think that that's that's the focus that we need to work on so for example let's have a look at combining exam practice with skills focus so let's imagine you're in the classroom and you've decided you, I'm sorry if I'm moving my hands a lot. I can't stop it. It's just something I do when I, when I give a session. So I'll try and keep as still as possible. I was told to keep still if I could. Um, <coughs> so basically, going back to your lesson, you, you've decided you want to do a little reading text in preparation for, for the exam. And what you're trying to do is to... It, kind of combine the typical product, which is exam practice, with skills focus, subskill in this case, the subskills related to reading. So you maybe go through this before they actually do the reading. So progress to success. So they read the title and text quickly and text quickly to get the gist. Read the questions and answer options. Underline the key words. Eliminate any answers you know are, are irrelevant. Find the relevant part of the text using the keywords. Look for words or phrases that eliminate or confirm the different options. So I'll just give you a minute. Just have a quick read through that, so you can you can um, have a, a couple of minutes to assimilate it. Okay. Right, now let's go back to what, do you, do you all remember what those sub-skills were for reading? We had gist, understanding main content, understanding specific information, um, etc. Now, the, all the things that are highlighted in green are from that list. So, let's say you give them a reading text about, I don't know, some, something about a girl who takes an exam, for example, and they read it and they say they've understood it and they've answered the questions, but that's as far as their analysis goes. What we want them to do is to analyze the skills they've been using while they were doing the reading text so they can tick them off that list of sub-skills. So we've got things like GIST, uh, underlining, uh, understanding specific information, finding the relevant part. So all these areas are areas that they need to be made aware of, that they're actually doing. Rather than, you know, it's that many of them are, are just try and read through something quite quickly. I mean, it's something they've done, I think, since they've been young kids, this idea of reading through it quickly, answering the questions and finishing as quickly as possible. Or... Some of them do the other thing. They just get bogged down with trying to understand every word. But if we can show them, okay, this is this is the text you've read. These are the things that you've been using as a process to help you understand the text. Okay, right, next bit. Like, for example, a multiple choice. You give them, this one's about playgrounds for the elderly. So... Rather than just treating it as a multiple choice, try and treat it as a, as a, again, this combination of, okay, they're going to do use of English as preparation for the exam. So in, that, in this case, it's product. But I want to combine it with process. So the way I can combine it is by asking them, read it as gist, find the important information, uh, look for ideas on 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 content or context and uh, other ideas such as the different skills that they can use for understanding information etc do that before they actually do the gap filler so focus on okay here are four sub skills I want you to use to understand the gap filler before you actually start doing it 
Um, I think they'll probably, when I first tried this, the, the students said to me, but this is quite a waste of time. They didn't kind of like realize that doing a gap filler or doing a multiple choice is much more than than just reading and, and writing the right answer. I mean, in this case, it, it says multiple choice, but it's more like a gap filler. There is a multiple choice after this. Once they fill the gaps, they then do the multiple choice. But if you say to them, OK, you've read through it, let's ha let's tick off the process you've used. So they've used just detailed information, getting meaning from context, the main idea. Um, they've looked at the purpose of it and they've looked at the organizational features for example how many paragraphs are there once you make them aware of that i mean what i actually do is i get them to write a list of the sub skills the ones i've just mentioned in the notebook i ask them to do maybe four or five of those sub skills gist detailed information uh the purpose and the text organization before they do a multiple choice or before they do a gap, this gap fill. Once they've done them, they tick them off and then they're more, how can I put it, prepared. They're better prepared to actually do in the gap filler. And they're also becoming aware of learning strategies. Okay, next one, listening. We've got listening for understanding, just detailed information, opinions, attitude, feelings, purpose, specific information, agreement, disagreement uh, between speakers. I can't really think of any more sub-skills for listening, but th this was one of the areas when I spoke to my niece and her, her group of friends that they said they, they were terrified of because they felt that they just couldn't cope with listening. They couldn't understand uh, most of it. And, in actual fact, I said to them, well, okay, well, let, let's let's do an experiment and we'll we'll do one. So we did a we did a listening in my sitting room, and I think there were about four of yeah, there were four of them, and uh, it was my niece and her three friends, and they did a listening with me, and we talked about it after, and I said, Well, what did you need to do to understand? Did you understand it? And they said, Well, more or less, yeah. So maybe the first thing was that they were put in that situation of it feeling as if it was an exam they were listening for listening's sake which takes away the stress level so maybe one of the things that using or focusing on sub skills helps you is to, to take away this feeling of okay here we go again another listening for the exam focus on uh, focus much more on the process of listening so when you give them a listening say okay today we're going to look at understanding opinions in a listening text and understanding the gist. Make sure that they have that list, like in the reading subskills, listening subskills, that they have a list. I make them write, actually write a list at the back of the books of those subskills. And once we've done the le um, part of the lesson on gist or giving opinions, attitudes and understanding what people are saying in the listening, I get them again to tick off that they've done that. And in the next class, what, what I've found after a while is that in the next class, they'll say to me, OK, we've done gist and we've done opinions. Could we look at a listening with more detailed information now? And what that meant when they asked me that was that they were beginning to understand how to listen. Because that's the key. We're, we're, we're so focused on let's do some practice. More practice you get, better you will get at it, which is true. But if that practice doesn't provide sufficient information for them to understand why they're getting better at it, it doesn't necessarily help. And especially the weaker ones. What, what they need is something concrete, some, something tangible to work with towards improving their sub skills in this case listening and going back to to being with my niece and her three friends we did that listening and and they they sort of like said okay 
well, we're going to go back and tell our teacher we want a list of seven skills. And I and I kind of like said, well, don't, because I'm not sure, you know, I don't want to interfere or anything. But anyway, they did. And the teacher came up with some sub skills and they now all have lists of, of sub skills at the back of the book. And I think that's an important point. It's not just the teacher who, ha who has to understand why or how to do listenings, it's, it's the students as well. And this process will eventually help them to produce a better product. Uh, uh, okay, let's carry on. Here's another one. This is, this is a, for flipped classrooms. Um, and, it, and it's along, it's kind of like along the same, the, the, along with the same idea, except that they do this at home. Uh, because it's, it's flipped classroom technique. So they, I, because I think what they need is to get practice in solitary. They don't need their friends saying, oh, I did better than you. Or, the, or they don't need the pressure of the teacher sort of asking them what their results were. So if, if you can sort of like transfer as much as possible of things like, you know, static things in, in many ways or passive things like listening, to the, the homework, all the better. But if you notice, this one again has this, this, I think someone said in one of their answers, this idea of giving them a nod in the right direction when we did have your say. And I think this one is giving a nod in the right direction because if you look, it's matching tips of setting goals for success. So I think, you know, I, I do tend to, sometimes I think it's maybe overload as well. I do tend to push, for lots of texts that I do and listenings, etc., are focused around sort of like dealing with exams and passing exams. So they can see how other people feel when they take exams. And so they also get tips in this case, um, tips for success. All right, let's, let's carry on. Now, number two. With various experiences, when you see people similar to you working hard and achieving goals, you believe you can. So it's this kind of, of look, imagine the teenagers in the classroom and one of them's messing about and turns around and sees one of their colleagues sort of like working quite hard, actually. Sometimes uh, seeing that colleague working hard makes makes the other one want to do the same. Not always, but, but sometimes. But th this is the idea. It's the idea of your peers um, having an effect on how you work as a student in the classroom. And I, and I think this is kind of like crucial, basically. Um, th this idea of, okay, we're, we're in this together, we're working together, let, let's see how we can help each other. And one of the things that I use, a, a practical thing that I use in the classroom is this. We have a weekly share. <coughs> so maybe on a Friday, um, I might put this up and ask them to work in groups together. So this is what I have learned. This is how I will share it with you. And this is why it's important. So what they usually use for this are, are going back to those sub skills again. If we've covered reading, listening, writing, speaking, they choose one. And they'll say, well, this, I sort of like sometimes monitor and listen to what they say. What one of them said, um, he said, well, I've learned how, what gist means. And now I, I now understand that I can understand uh, a reading text in gist, but I can't understand every word. And I thought that was great. It, he actually sounded a bit like a teacher in a way, uh, using all these words like gist. Um, but he looked confident and it didn't matter what words he used the most important thing was that he was beginning to see um how can i put it the wood for the trees basically he he was beginning going back to louise's point again beginning to sort of dissect and separate things into manageable blocks and i found that that this weekly share works incredibly well um because a lot comes from it, and, and then they, they do tend to ask lots of questions. So definitely worthwhile. Um, it's been one of the most successful things I've done up to now, I think. Right, let's see. Another one, a commitment questionnaire. Again, it's this nod in the right direction, you know, sort of like, if you want to pass an exam, you have to be committed. 
So I want to know, have you done these things? So they get like this little questionnaire. So can you name any specific areas you've worked on this week? How much time have you dedicated to improving your skills? If not, can you give a good reason why not? And what would you like to share with the class? And finally, what do you need help with? Again, it's it's kind of like a, a group sharing thing where they talk together. And maybe the first couple of times you use it, it doesn't particularly work that well. But after a while, if you uh, keep pushing for things like this, you'll find that they do respond well. You know, they, they will come up with things like, well, look, I've, I've looked at gap fillers this week. I've looked at... Uh, I don't know, I've done some listenings at home and I practice my writing. And one of them will say, well, I haven't done any. So I've often heard responses like, well, you're not going to pass if you don't work. You know, and, and that kid who got who was told that sort of like one, one of there were two of them. One of them actually responded well and started working a lot harder. Um, but I think if you try this kind of thing, it's it's showing in many ways, especially the last question, that you're prepared to help them with the process and that you realise that they that they need to work but they also need help. So that's another, another goodie that I would definitely advise you using in class. Right, verbal persuasion. With influential people, people sorry, <laughs> e.g. a teacher, good student, reinforce the view that we can achieve our goal. Um, I mean, it's quite disheartening, I think, for the teacher and for the students as well to sort of like uh, always get, let's say they're doing a writing, for them to always get sort of like low grades on their writing and, and things covered in red, which, by the way, is something I never do. I always do all my, I know it's, it's probably silly, but I do all my corrections in green. It just seems like a softer colour for some reason. But, you know, it can be quite disheartening. But if we reinforce the view or if we keep pushing for those goals, but at the same time, as I mentioned before, making sure they can identify their goals. Because at the moment, most of the time, the only goal they have is the date of the exam, taking it and hoping for the best. Um, you know, I mean, what they need is to be able to identify more tangible, shorter term goals, which is going back again to, to this idea of helping them with soft skills so they can, they're easier to identify basically. Right, okay, now we're going to do another have your say and what I'd like you to, to think about is how can we help students reinforce their self-esteem? How can we help them feel that they can that they can do well and that they can get there in the end? So I'll leave you for a couple of minutes just to come up with some ideas. I'm sure you'll come up with some wonderful ones. And the last time you say, they're absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yes. So um, the question is on your screen now. How can we help students reinforce their self-esteem? I'll give you a couple of seconds to write in. You can write in short, short answers, as I said before. Um, and let's see what people say. Let's see what you think. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, um, well, it's definitely a problem. It is a problem. And it's something that can be, I think, easily lost in yes. the yeah. daily well, the, 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 all the things that you have to cover in, in, in the class, um, you're thinking of the class itself and then the week and then what's, you know, the weeks and what you said about the exam coming up and you're, it, it's often very product um, orientated. So it's, it's we, we, we do often lose sight of that, you know, building that yes. confidence yeah. and, yeah. Absolutely. And how do you do them? I mean, exactly. I, I, you know, going back to, to sort of like speaking to that group of four, including my niece, I mean, she, she, she gets so upset and so worried and she mm. just says she can't do it. And she's a person who gets nine and ten out of ten in everything she does. Wow. 
So you imagine well, someone who doesn't get that grade, how they feel. How, you know, she just sits exactly. and crash. She's actually sick sometimes. And, you know, oh, okay, no. that's not necessarily yeah. self-esteem, but it's it's worry. And she says, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not going to do well, you know. Yes. So, so it just it's, it's quite shocking, someone who's, so you that, know, someone who's quite good compared to to someone who doesn't do very well or gets continually gets yes you know sort of like yes. bad grades well how on earth do they yes. feel exactly okay well, we've, we've got, got anything comments in? yes yes we do making them be protagonists um you know they're doing well and praise them okay praising has come up quite a lot actually and somebody says they they need it absolutely yes, yes, they do. Uh, yeah. with beautiful with this is a lovely comment <laughs> with beautiful and enchanting words and a big smile oh okay. that's lovely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. making them aware of their strengths pointing them out highlighting yeah. them showing yeah, exactly. them where they they've made improvements absolutely okay. that's fantastic yeah. thank you yeah let's just let's just go with two of those comments one of those comments about sort of enchanting and enchanting comments and a big smile i think th th this thing of a big smile is so crucial you know like sometimes we have a laughing class if if i tell them about things i've done badly i tell them about you know sort of failing exams and things and 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 that and sometimes when they don't do very well at something i you know we have a good laugh about it it's it's very very important i think just to spend at least five minutes moving away from from like this this idea of churning out exam tasks and things and then the other one about making them helping them see how they're doing i think this relates to the next slide so let's just move on to the next slide and and this is something i do in class a lot so going we're going back to those sub skills in the listening section I can understand the gist, I can find specific information, I can identify opinions, I can identify the implications, and then the multiple choice gap there. If you remember that, it was about elderly people in the park. So they did that, and then they completed their own self-evaluation. Uh, you know, what I found was every student could put something in the improving area every single one of them even if they weren't doing very well and and you probably thought as a teacher that it would be quite difficult for them to pass the exam but they could still put something in, in improving and 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 that really really helps to develop self-confidence because if they see that they're improving well they'll try even harder and also if they can identify what needs more work um they can let me know because what we do is we count up once they fill this in, we count up together how, how many areas need more work. And based on percentages, if more students, basically, we, we begin working on that. And then the students that feel, well, look, you're not covering what I'm doing. Well, they are given extra work on the areas that they feel that needs more work. One area that, that is very tricky to deal with is the not sure, because you'll find that a lot of them put not sure. Um, and this was this was something uh, that I felt that they needed to be made aware of, of this idea of saying, well, I'm not sure. It's kind of like, in a way, okay, we feel sorry for them, but it's the easy option to say, I'm not sure. So I make them go back to their list at the back of their notebooks of sub-skills and say, well, okay, identify where you're not sure. Tell me what part you don't feel very clear about. So, so it, it's and I found that once I insisted on that, they stopped putting not sure, and they tended to put more. Well, it needs a bit more work, or it's improving, um, because as I say, sometimes we need to realise that they're actually putting either the easy option, or we haven't clarified enough to them what their goals are. Okay, right. Let's continue. Uh, another one I do is, is I call it building a growth mindset because it's, it's kind of that, this idea of talking about exams so they can, they can feel that 
they're not just the only ones in this world who have to take exams or have to study at home. So um, what we do is that it's again a bit like a questionnaire. Things I can do to prepare before the test. Things I can do so we feel at our best on the day of the test. Things I can do when I get our mock test results back. And I, I actually ask them to fill in the blue section. So make sure I understand how to approach the task, go to bed early, if I'm happy with my results, if I'm not happy, etc. So we have discussions on this. Okay, you know, let's let's talk about the things that you need to do. And I think that's also an important thing. Even if it just means dedicating five minutes at the end of the class or giving them it for homework, rather than giving them a gap filler to do for homework, for more exam practice, give them something like this so they can analyse how they can help themselves do better. Okay, and talking about mock exams, I think mock exams are crucial. I think we should be doing more of them, but that doesn't mean to say the whole exam. You can do sections, but I think after... Okay, let's imagine we've got a nine-month course, so it's separated into three into three sections. So we've got first term, second term, and third term. Usually, I do mock exams or part of mock exams um, within the first term. I think the sooner that they learn the mechanics of what the exam is like, the better, and they can prepare themselves a lot better. And it helps them to create a study plan because that's what we do together. We do the mock exam. And then we think, OK, this is how we all did. Let's let's together work out a plan. So the next one that we do is better. Um, and, you know, I think it's kind of like quite, quite important that you do these things. You can create your own mock exam. There are mock exams in, in, in the course book, kind of like there's one section that's called uh, um, focus on on exams or something like that and you can really really sort of like create those as mock exams and make them think it's a mock exam so the more in this case the more often they do it possibly the less daunting it seems right okay let's move on uh, this is what this is from that section that I told you about which is called countdown to exams so once that once they've done the mock exam uh, is for them to go through these four areas of skills, reading, writing, listening and speaking. And they, rather than you analysing how they did, once they've got, I mean, I often just give them the answers on photocopies and say, well, mark, mark your partner's mock exam or mark your own mock exam uh, and then do the questionnaire. So they, they might choose just one of those skills or they might choose two or they might choose to evaluate all four. And I don't know if you can read it very well, but the first one is I can read and understand articles in which the writer has a specific opinion on an issue. So again, we're going back to those sub skills. I can scan long and complex text to find relevant facts and information. They need, the students need to know uh, what this means and how to do it. So that they, again, I keep emphasizing this idea of identifying their goals through uh, dissecting sub skills and I think this is quite a nice example of a questionnaire that they can do right now emotional and physiological states when we feel tired stressed or depressed our self-efficacy will be low so this is this is the fourth area of those learning strategies of, of lifting yourself up again and trying to deal with everything that's going on as a student. Um, it, I think it's much harder than, than we ever could ever imagine, possibly. Uh, what I'd like you to do now is you're going to do a, um, you're going to answer some questions about this, this area, emotional, psychological states. Now, here there are three. The question is, how many of your students suffer from test anxiety? Choose which one relates to your class. So if you could do that, please, and do the poll, it would be the, it would be great. Um, there's probably uh, one that you would think, well, I wish you'd said so and so because I don't, ref no, none of these reflect how I feel. But try and choose one, <laughs> um, and then we'll have a okay. chat about it. 
That's great. Yes. So that's on your screen now. The question is, how many of your students suffer from test anxiety? And choose one answer the most appropriate for you or one that relates to your class. And the options are most of them, especially as the exam gets closer. The second one is a few, but I give them advice on how to cope with stress. The third one, not many, as they seem to take test anxiety in their stride. And the fourth and last one, I have no idea. So we seem to be at a majority at the moment, at the moment at 67% saying the first one, most of them, especially as the exam gets closer. Yeah. And it's neck, neck and neck between the second and the third. A few, but I give wow. them advice on how to cope with stress. Not many, as they seem to take test anxiety in their stride, and that they are at twenty percent at the moment. And the other, wow. the first one, has gone down to was fifty-five percent, and actually the second one, twenty-seven percent, and finally eighteen percent for the third one. And nobody has put anything. Nobody has put anything for the last. I have no, no idea. I didn't think anybody would. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, thanks for everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, well, let's just um, take a quick look at what kind of like the, the the psychological, but also physical effects of test anxiety. Here is a a, a list here of the three areas. So there's kind of like the physical reaction to anxiety. You know this. Uh, this idea where, where kids are actually sick, they don't sleep at night, they get migraine, uh, they stop eating, they worry about performance, which is, it's, am I going to pass? What am my family going to say if I don't pass? I don't know, you know, sort of like how I feel about this. And then the behavior response, the coping strategies. I can't cope. I don't know where to begin. And I think these, these are the three, the three, <coughs> that are, are crucial now some many of you said you you sort of like give them strategies so let's have a look at some of the ones that you can use um countdown to exams also includes sort of like a stress test which i think is just great which of these symptoms is not an indicator of stress or anxiety so it's is doing these things with with them uh getting them to actually answer the stress test discussing it and then you know, sort of like be, being a bit pig-headed in a way and going back to it and saying, oh, oh by the way, uh, what sub-skills did you use to answer this? You know, I did that and they all went, oh, no, not those sub-skills again. But it was good because it made them realise that actually sub-skills can be quite fun if you do a stress test. Um, and I think this, this kind of thing is important where you open up, but not just to individuals as a whole class and talk about the effects of stress. Another one I give them is a kind of like map of how to cope, kind of finding a place to study at home, having the right environment, you know, light your candle if you really like it, when to study, uh, support network, where in other words, you know, sort of like emails of friends, make, or having what I call a, a, a work buddy, so they have always have someone in their own class it appear to, to speak to and to talk to when they're having problems, a checklist, study cards, exam diary. So we, we talk about these, we decide on criteria for each one, um, and we do it in class. I mean, sometimes I even give these kinds of things for homework and ask them to come up with one, one suggestion for each, and then we talk about it together. Uh, Practicing self-talk, replacing negative when performance suffers due to test anxiety. So we have a list of, of positive thoughts on the on the on the wall and they choose to just to do like a mantra to each other. Uh, changing mindsets, so helping students to see their progression. I think that came up, this idea of showing them what they're learning. Someone mentioned that. Uh, and using vision and positive self-imagery, imagining oneself feeling confident during the test and doing well in it. That, that, that one actually works quite well. They close their eyes and they think about themselves in the test and what they're doing. Um, and, uh, and it's maybe just like 30 seconds and then we talk about it after. It just makes the test less daunting 
and kind of like this a feeling of being attacked um because i think that's what many of them feel like they think well that that test is really against me it's trying to make my life difficult so if they can see it's doing well it actually helps in the long run it really helps uh maria's tips now this is what we came up with this my niece maria came up with some tips after we'd had a a, a little chat and um, these were the things she did to help her make a physical exam calendar group brainstorming days uh keep your mind off exams be brave about getting things wrong and have an exam buddy which is that thing i said having someone to talk to um these are some things I do in class that they, everyone laughed at me at the beginning um, because I kind of like said to them I wanted them to do that. And they said, do you think we'll, ever, we'll actually do it? And I said, well, I can only hope. And uh, some of them did. You know, they had intention setting exercises. It's clarifying your goal when you're going to study. Because one of the problems is when they study, they do a lot of time wasting. They don't really kind of like focus on things what what they tend to do is just write 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 and make notes whereas a lot of the time what they need to be doing is thinking about again my my fav my mantra you know how to deal with sub skills uh, we do deep breathing exercises the boys laughed at this but in the end they actually started enjoying it so be pre if you try this be prepared for them to say no at the beginning um, but they will eventually come around practicing stillness just focusing and just doing this for a few minutes i asked my group of four with my niece what they felt about doing meditation or doing really short exercises and they said to me well we feel silly but as long as it's short and sweet it's okay so so this kind of like you know you can make it short it needn't be 20 minutes it could be just two or three minutes practicing stillness I get them to do it just before we're going to do some kind of, uh, in this case, exam product. You know, maybe doing a mock exam or maybe looking at something specific which is related to the exam. Okay. Well, a summary of guidance. I mean, it's it's very hard because every every situation's different. You've all got different students. You're all uh, sort of like probably. In, in the position of having to work very hard to try and get them through the exams uh, and feel sometimes a bit on your own because I mean you know I think teachers could do with a teacher buddy as well but I think these are the areas that we should be encouraging students to do to do and to think about their positive qualities and strengths defining their goals positive affirmations to themselves relaxation techniques, deep breathing, listening to music, taking a walk. And we should be showing them this. Like, for example, this list, they should be seeing it. Um, because I think what, again, it goes back to what is tangible. Teenagers ref sort of like react well when they can see things and understand them. It's, it's this idea, I think sometimes they react badly when we tell them they have to do something without giving any of criteria of why it's not enough just to say do the exam what they need to know is if i say do relaxation techniques they need to know why like the a b and the c below um oh sorry i've jumped one and the last one product and process uh, we looked at that before here's the summary it's more or less the same thing but i think maybe what I would like to stress again is is kind of like if it would be possible for you, it sounds as if from the things you're saying that you're already very aware of the importance of process. But I think we need to bring in those practical ideas that I said, like, you know, sort of commitment questionnaires, uh, getting them, as someone said, doing little evaluation sheets to be aware of their progress. Um, but also specifically focusing on the list of the areas related to each what are the sub skills working on those identifying them and using putting them up front much more in the classroom i think um now here's the point where you need to send in your questions um 
I don't know how this works, Louise. I think they just send them in and I go through, you tell me and we go through them. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Um, so this is an opportunity for everybody to um, ask any questions or send in comments. There is a, um, a window on your screen now. Uh, if you'd like to send in comments or have any questions about anything, in, in particular the different areas that um, uh, Lynn has focused on today, I think the um, what what has come through for me is um, I think you've explained very clearly how important process is, and yes, I think we're all aware of it. But what's really important, and I think you've demonstrated it very well, Lynn, is how. No, the practical yes. side yes. of putting that um, to, 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 into practice no, in, in, in the classroom. Yes. So first of all, we need to be absolutely aware of how practically we can, we can really make this process happen and therefore um, help students to become more aware of their learning of how they exactly. learn or how they can yeah. learn and how they can learn better. Um, so there is a reflective process that the teacher has to go through and, and, and then come up with ways, um, as you demonstrated, to actually then communicate that to the students and get them on board. And as you said, and my experience has been the same as well in the classroom, is that when you try out certain kinds of activities, at first they perhaps they may protest, they may think, oh, what's this? What's this, <laughs> you know, what's this got to do with anything? Um, but the important yeah. point that you made about, well, explaining why. Absolutely, yes. we yeah. all need to know yeah. why. We're, we're, you know, um, it, 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 it's not a mechanical process. So you're told something and you do it. You have this need, yeah. it's a human need to know why we're, we're, we're doing something. And that's the point of entry, isn't it? Whether or yeah. not there will always be some students who like certain activities more than other students. And that's, that's natural. But the point of entry, I would say, is the, the why. OK. Um, I think so. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think, you know, kind of like it's it's very important that I realise that mo most teachers, you know, who are teaching at this level, they know what they're doing and, and they're, yeah. they're very, you know, we're talking to sort of like very experienced practitioners here. Exactly. Um, but I think what, what, as you say, I mean, the point I want to get over is, is this idea of, of elaborating much more and identifying the whys and the what's you know going mm. back i mean i know yeah i've said the word sub skills so many times but it's the one area that they can identify and they need to be made aware of their progress there and i mean that's yes. why i provided the, those practical ideas but i do i think you know that that is the key word the why this is why you're doing yes. it but this is what you can do to become self-sufficient and a little yes. bit more autonomous, I think. Yeah. Yes. Have we absolutely. any questions through, Louise? Well, we've got comments. We've got comments saying thank you very much. That was all very clear. Um, I really like the focus on this, um, the, the practical side, what we can actually do. People are mentioning the commitment questionnaire. They really liked it. And the idea of um, having a, you called it the Friday, well, you could do it on a Friday, but the, the idea of sharing. Um, yes, weekly together, share. Yeah. Weekly share. Um, there have been comments yeah. on that. There aren't any questions, which seems to suggest yeah. that people are on the same page and that everything was really clear. That's great. Um, uh -huh. I really... I also really liked um, the idea that, um, it, okay, you talked about the soft skills, but you also talked about coping strategies yes, and the, yes. the advice you were giving and, and, and the idea of, um, well, self-talk, because um, it's not something that we necessarily do uh, naturally. You know, no, they decided no, we're not, no, not we're, we're not kind of, we're not, we're not encouraged or we're not educated though to, to think, Okay, um, yes, um, 
I can do this. Um, yes. And imagine, and the idea that you said about imagining yourself doing something well, we don't tend yes. to project ourselves in no, that way. No, not at all. I mean, I learned this technique from, from an American athlete, because that's the way they work over there, okay. is this idea of believing in yourself. Uh, and they get very okay. good results. And, and I read some sort of like um, some research on how it's been transferred to language learning and psychology. And it really, really works. And you can actually have a good laugh, you know, at the, the end of the lesson, yeah. you give them some, some sort of like phrases that say nice yes. things about them. And they choose which phrase. And they get really embarrassed at the beginning. But then <laughs> later on, they, they, they say, hey, can we do those phrases again? They really begin to enjoy it and accept the yes. fact that they can say or think something nice about themselves because that's one of the main problems. You know, yes. they they worry too much and they they blow things out of all proportion, basically. Yeah. I think. Yeah. You know, is, and, and that is a nice thing to do. That's a well, really I mean, nice I thing was to just do, yes. I really hope that, that people have felt it was worthwhile giving up some of their time to listen you know i've tried Absolutely. to bring in practical ideas and uh, yeah you know, yeah, no, absolutely, no, totally, totally, and the experience that you've shared, I mean, and, and I, I think it was lovely that you were able to talk about, you know, real people, so your your niece, Maria, and the teachers that you, you, you've you worked with and, and talked to, that's, that's so important yes. to be able to yeah. relate it to real examples and, 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 and bring it down to the practical again, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Feet on the ground. Well, I interviewed a lot of teachers <laughs> and students. <laughs> it was, was it yes. was interesting. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. thank you so much. Eh? Thank you so much, Lynn. This is it's been wonderful. But don't go away. Oh, you no, you go off the screen now. Um, please don't go away though. Um, I, now I would like to introduce uh, my colleague uh, Santi Diaz sales manager in Madrid. Santi is going to give a presentation on Prospects, the Bachillerato course by Macmillan Education, um, for which Lynn wrote the teacher's book for level one. And so over to you, Santi. Todo tuyo. Hola, buenas tardes. Bueno, pues mi, mi labor es sobre todo y ser, ser muy breve y no enrollarme demasiado, pero lo que quería es enseñaros en 10 o 12 minutillos lo que es Prospect. Igual, mi objetivo es que, que os guste, que os llame la atención lo que, lo que os vamos a enseñar y que llaméis a vuestro comercial de la zona para que, para que os, lo, o, os lo enseñe. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, bueno, pues a ver si lo, lo consigo. Prospect es el, el curso que hemos eh, preparado específicamente para, para la preparación de la, de, de la EBAU. Pero bueno, eh, con Prospect hemos querido ir un poquito más allá. Entonces, bueno, pues en esta diapositiva vamos a ver un poco lo que representa eh, Prospect para, para Macmillan y lo que hemos hecho para, para vosotros. Es un proyecto continuista con, con lo que es la metodología de, de Macmillan. ¿vale? Macmillan, eh, sabéis que desde edades tempranas, desde, desde infantil, que trabajamos con los niños, primaria, secundaria, vamos preparando a, lo, a los niños poco a poco para que vayan interiorizando y, sobre todo, usando el inglés. Entonces, en bachillerato, que es casi al final ya del recorrido, por así decir, entre comillas, obligatorio de, de, de los chicos, pues no queremos dejarlo en un simple curso para preparar un practice test, para preparar el examen de selectividad y sí que hemos querido dar esa continuidad metodológica. De ahí todo lo que habéis oído hablar eh, eh, Alin con el tema del trabajo de las eh, subdestrezas, el, la atención a la diversidad, todo lo que es el critical thinking, el, el crear opinión, o sea, resumidas cuentas en hacer eh, alumnos de futuro, es decir, cuando el siguiente paso vayan a la universidad o vayan al mercado laboral, que, que, que en bachillerato hayan seguido con su proceso de, de aprendizaje de inglés. Prospect, ¿qué, ¿qué os ofrece? Pues una muy buena preparación para el examen de BAO, por supuesto. Y además ya sabéis que en, que en, que en España, pues eh, las 17 comunidades autónomas personalizan, por así decir, el examen de BAO. Wow. Parece que es un examen eh, igual en todas las comunidades, pero tienen sus eh, diferencias. Entonces, con, con Prospect lo que hemos querido hacer es un, un gran esfuerzo para integrar todas esas tipologías de, de actividades que hay en todas las comunidades eh, autónomas 
eh, y que todos podáis trabajar en función de esas necesidades. Prospect es, eh, hemos querido que sea diferenciador, ¿vale? Que no sea un libro más de preparación del, del, del bachillerato. ¿Y eso cómo lo hemos hecho? Bueno, pues intentando elegir eh, muy bien los temas, que no sean, que no caduquen rápido, que el libro pueda estar en, en un centro que cada vez los libros tienen que estar más eh, debido a la situación económica. Y que no pase de moda, que los eh, chicos no se aburran porque los personajes que salen o los temas que salen estén pasados de moda. Entonces, ¿qué hemos hecho? Pues utilizar eh, los temas primordiales que están dentro de la Agenda 2030 de, de, de Naciones Unidas y que realmente son las cosas que interesan ahora mismo a, a esos futuros eh, universitarios. Les ofrecemos contenido real, eh, pues eh, con, con vídeos reales, con eh, readings reales eh, de The Guardian, de, de Reuters eh, y sobre todo eh, flexibilidad a la hora de utilizar los recursos porque aunque es bachillerato sí existe esa, esa diversidad eh, dentro del aula. ¿vale? ¿Cómo lo hacemos? Muy rápidamente os, os enseño. Bueno, pues empezamos la unidad. Eh, con todos los objetivos de, de la unidad, pero yo me quiero centrar en el vocabulario. El vocabulario para vosotros es muy importante y para los alumnos de cara a preparar esa, esa, esa prueba de la, de la BAO. ¿vale? Eh, Prosper, ¿qué es lo que aporta? No, no os da una simple lista de vocabulario de un tema que los chicos tienen que, me, que memorizar, sino realmente ejercicios eh, que implican un mayor reto que la ESO, porque ya tienen la edad y es lo que le, les exige hacer un buen examen de la, de la BAO, incluso alumnos que puedan hacer exámenes externos fuera de una forma integrada, es decir, vais a ver que hay actividades de listening, que hay actividades de speaking como el, el speak up de aquí, porque lo que queremos hacer es que ese uso del vocabulario sea real y que esté integrado en, en, eh, según las inteligencias de los, de los alumnos. El que es más eh, musical le necesita más los listening, el que es más kinestético, el que es más visual. Por eso, al final de, esta, de este trabajo de vocabulario que, que hacemos con, eh, con estas Word Smart que tiene eh, pues estos cuadros de trabajo más eh, con un enfoque más gramatical, el tema de, de prefijos, sufijos, eh, eh, bueno, los colocations, bueno, y todo lo que es la aplicación, la puesta en práctica de estas, eh, de estas cajitas, que aumentamos un poquito el nivel de exigencia eh, y un poquito el reto para que el, eh, el objetivo de, de aprobar al final el examen de, 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 de BAO sea mucho más sencillo. También nos apoyamos en estos eh, vídeos que os comentaba, porque son vídeos reales, son vídeos auténticos de agencias como de Reuters o de Guardian que, que os digo y les ofrece a los chicos una ventana tanto a la cultura como al conocimiento de los, de los temas en, eh, en los distintos acentos, es decir, en americano, en británico por supuesto, pero por ejemplo en este, en, 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 en americano que hablan en Kenia. ¿Vale? Entonces, ofrecemos esa ventana al mundo real a los, eh, a los alumnos. Hablando de los eh, vídeos también, bueno, pues en esta sección de, de Reading, lo que ofrecemos son estos eh, Quick Clips eh, para trabajar todo lo que es el Critical Thinking. ¿Vale? El Critical Thinking está muy, eh, muy parejo a, a, a todas las publicaciones de, de Macmillan porque lo que cre queremos crear son eh, adultos con opinión propia y con, y, con, eh, y con forma de expresar todos esos sentimientos o todas esas aquellas opiniones. Entonces, para formar un, un buen eh, criterio um, propio, pues qué mejor que escuchar a gente de, de su edad, que son los que salen en, en los vídeos, eh, explicando eh, cuáles son sus opiniones. Una vez que los, los trabajamos eh, con ejercicios tipo examen, que son estos que van marcador de, de, de color como Rosita, eh, trabajamos en profundidad todo el tema de las eh, subdestrezas que, que, que ha explicado antes eh, el IM y no voy a entrar en, en profundidad. Eh, vamos a analizar un texto modelo y lo vamos a ir trabajando de forma muy, muy, muy pautada. Eh, incluso con actividades opcionales de mayor reto como este es en Get Online, porque como os digo, todos los textos son reales, son googleables, que decimos nosotros, todos se pueden buscar en, 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 en internet porque son completamente reales y si los alumnos quieren hacer esa labor de investigación, de buscar, eh, que está ahora con la LOMLOE, va a ser muy demandada, todo lo que es el trabajo por proyectos, eh, búsqueda de información en, 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 en otros lugares, bueno, pues se puede trabajar. Los textos, como, como veis, 
Hace mucho hincapié también en todo lo que es el, el tema de los idioms, de las phrasal verbs, y luego ya en, en segundo de, de bachillerato eh, hacemos también mucho hincapié en lo que son las eh, exam skills que también nos ha hablado eh, Lynn de, de, de ello. A la hora de presentar eh, la gramática, bueno, pues estamos en bachillerato, eh, ya los alumnos necesitan eh, pues, eh, una presentación de la gramática en contexto, porque realmente es lo que se van a encontrar eso en, el, eh, eh, en la EBAU y, y en la realidad. No, le van a encontrar, no se van a encontrar en la vida real un texto que solo utilice eh, la primera condicional o que solo utilice un determinado punto gramatical. Entonces, bueno, vamos a trabajar esa gramática en, en, en contexto porque ya son mucho más maduros y ya que requiere un, un reto cognitivo mayor que, que lo que vamos a trabajar en, que lo que hemos hecho en la, en la ESO. Vamos a trabajar, por supuesto, los eh, rewritings, que son muy, muy normales en casi todas las eh, comunidades eh, autónomas, con los cuadraditos de eh, watch out, que son eh, aquellos um, fallos gramaticales que cometemos los, eh, los, los estudiantes españoles, ¿vale? Y luego todas eh, actividades eh, de consolidación, de mayor reto, de forma acumulativa, con todo lo que hemos visto desde el principio de curso y actividades de, de aim higher. ¿Vale? En cuanto al, eh, a continúa la, 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 la unidad, pues eh, ese enfoque continuo a más vocabulario y trabajando otras destrezas que si bien en la mayoría de las comunidades pues el listening or speaking es donde menos hincapié eh, hacemos pero como sabéis hay comunidades como Galicia y Cataluña en el que sí se tienen actividades de listening en el examen EVAO de ahí que también lo tenemos eh, muy bien desarrollado muy bien pautado con ese trabajo de las eh, subdestrezas y por, lo, eh, y por lo tanto también la parte de speaking porque queremos dar ese paso más además de la BAU. Es decir, lo que queremos al fin y al cabo es que el alumno cuando salga de nuestro centro escolar eh, produzca y cuando llegue a la universidad pueda producir. De ahí que sigamos dando muchas pautas para eh, esa, ese trabajo de, eh, de expresar todos sus, eh, todo su conocimiento, todas esas relaciones sociales que puede trabajar en la parte eh, de speaking y por supuesto en el, en, el, en el writing que vamos a ver a continuación. Si sí puedo pasar la diapo. Vale. En el writing, bueno, pues eh, una de las cosas que es famoso en los eh, libros de bachillerato de, de Macmillan es justamente por ese trabajo denodado, muy pautado del writing, con actividades previas de calentamiento, con ese trabajo de las subdestrezas antes de, de enfocarnos en lo que es el modelo, ese trabajo eh, muy guiado del, del modelo eh, con la guía para que con, eh, con muy paso a paso con las eh, expresiones o con los verbos o con los, eh, los giros que tiene que utilizar en función de esos eh, de ese tipo de texto que tienen que, que trabajar. Y al final, en, ese, en esa intención que tiene Prosper de ir más allá eh, y de las eh, nuevas eh, eh, no sé cómo explicarlo, de esas nuevas tendencias que nos va a traer también, la aunque ya existían, eh, sobre todo en nuestra asignatura de, de, de inglés, pero en eh, todas las asignaturas todo ese trabajo por proyectos. Entonces, al final de la unidad vamos a trabajar con un, eh, vamos a terminar con un proyecto de forma que puedan aplicar todo lo que hemos aprendido. Eh, por un lado, vamos a empezar con dos tipologías de vídeos, es decir, eh, por un lado las presentaciones, que igual van a ser muy importantes en lo que es la, la, la LOMLOE, como ese, ese, ese indicador, esa competencia a trabajar en, en bachillerato de cara, de cara a la universidad, y también eh, vídeos de, eh, de life skills. ¿Vale? de esos indicadores competenciales ya más habituales que hemos ido trabajando desde, desde primaria y secundaria. Está muy pautado, primero vemos eh, ese vídeo de cómo se trabajan esas presentaciones o cómo se trabajan esas life skills y eh, nuevamente vamos a trabajar nuevo vocabulario para enfocarlo y, tra y trabajarlo así y, eh, y luego vamos a hacer la guía, igual que hemos hecho con el writing, bueno, pues el, el, el project plan para poder hacerlo. Otra de las cosas eh, Creemos que innovador es incluir la rúbrica eh, para aquellos de vosotros que queréis trabajarlo y la rúbrica la lleva el, el alumno para poder trabajar 
eh, esos indicadores competenciales que le va a servir también de repaso de todos los contenidos de la unidad. El repaso finaliza con el exam focus, es decir, todo ya aplicado a ese repaso gramatical de todos los contenidos de la, de la, de la gramática. ¿Vale? Igual, de forma acumulativa, como veis, esta por ejemplo es la unidad 3, pues eh, todos los contenidos que hemos visto en la unidad 1, 2, 3, si fuera la unidad eh, 8, pues sería todas las, eh, de todas las unidades anteriores. En segundo bachillerato se cambia un, un se modifica un poquito el tema de las... Eh, de las presentaciones, eh, continuamos con, con ello como objetivo de cara a, al futuro, pero aquí hacemos el foco en, en los Flip Classroom, en estos videoblogs de alumnos que pre están preparando el examen de selectividad. Con estas pautas, con estas, eh, lo que nos ha comentado antes Lim, esa forma de vencer el estrés o de ir preparándonos eh, lo mejor posible eh, para el examen de, de, de BAO, con un eh, y lo vamos a hacer en tipo proyecto para ir a asimilarlo con una guía eh, muy pautada y con las rúbricas para ir eh, trabajando. Vamos alternando lo que es la parte de presentación con la preparación de, de, de exámenes externos. En definitiva, pues eh, lo que os presentamos con Prospect pues es, es, es más que un libro de, de, de bachillerato. Es un libro que por supuesto va a preparar la, la EBAU en, en los formatos de, de todas las comunidades autónomas, pero además lo que ofrece son esas secciones de critical thinking, de ese, ese trabajo de, de investigación, de busca de, de información para, para ampliar ese conocimiento eh, del, del alumno, esas actividades por, eh, orales, porque en el fondo lo que queremos es que también en el aula los alumnos se comuniquen en, 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 en inglés y aunque no es prioritario lo, la parte de speaking en, en un curso de preparación de bachillerato, sí lo queremos eh, trabajar para eh, redondear, redondear el círculo y que la preparación de nuestros alumnos sea perfecta. Pero, por supuesto, eh, hacemos mucho hincapié en, en ese trabajo exhaustivo de los puntos específicos del, del examen de la, de la BAO. Entonces, al final del workbook eh, y al final del estudio vamos a tener mucho material de autoestudio para los, eh, para los chavales, pues... Eh, de práctica a, a varios niveles de exigencia de ese vocabulario, eh, con trabajo de phrasal verbs, con las listas de vocabulario en el libro vienen en, mono, en monolingüe, con la transcripción fonética, pero en el estudio de Resource Center del token digital, pues también lo tienen en todas las, en todas las lenguas eh, en el que se pueden eh, trabajar, lo tienen en castellano, en catalán, en, en euskera, en gallego. Vale. Entonces, igual, lo mismo que decimos con el vocabulario, pues por supuesto el otro punto fuerte, la, toda la parte del, del writing, tanto con los writing reference como con práctica, más práctica de los distintos eh, tipos de examen, con lo cual los alumnos van a tener muchísimo material físico, es decir, no vais a tener que estar haciendo tantas fotocopias constantemente, sino que lo tenéis en los, en los elementos del, del, del alumno. ¿Vale? Como veis, lo mismo también para gramática, eh, las listas de phrasal verbs, todo este material está físico en el libro. Pero también para vosotros con material vais a tener en el Teacher Resource Center pues más fichas para atender a esa diversidad que comentábamos. Eh, bueno, pues a dos niveles de exigencia, tanto para la gramática como para el vocabulario, pero también para las cuatro destrezas y para los exámenes en, en formato Word para que podáis editar y adaptar eh, para cada una de las unidades, los trimestres, el diagnóstico, el final de curso y además una herramienta de, de una herramienta automática de, para hacer exámenes, pruebas de selectividad, eh, un test generator en los recursos digitales del profesor, con una batalla de actividades mmm, bastante amplia para que podáis ir seleccionando las tipologías de, de ejercicio en función de las, de las necesidades de vuestra comunidad autónoma. Entonces, son más de 10 eh, actividades a dos niveles de exigencia, con lo cual son 20, y luego cada una de las, de las destrezas o cada una de las partes del examen tenéis una batalla ingente de, de actividades para que podáis hacerlo. ¿Qué buscamos? Bueno, pues esa flexibilidad para adaptarnos a no solamente a la preparación de exámenes, no solamente a los distintos niveles de los, de los chicos, sino también a, a continuar con la formación de, 
de, de inglés. Bueno, todo esto al final lo presentamos en un material físico y una de las cosas que nos ha, nos ha enseñado el, el, eh, esta desagradable eh, pandemia que hemos tenido es, le, es el trabajo, el blended entre el, el material papel y el material digital. Entonces, con todos los eh, libros en, en papel vamos a tener la licencia digital. Pero la licencia digital completa, es decir, no es un, un, un PDF enriquecido, no es un, un ebook con los audios y con los vídeos, sino que absolutamente todas las actividades interactivas, autocorregibles, con trazabilidad por vuestra parte, en, en la licencia va en el student con el student y la del workbook con el workbook, aparte del student resource center y todo el material para, para atender a la diversidad. Y para vosotros está todo absolutamente en, en una misma plataforma, en Mamilan Education Everywhere, con eh, todos los componentes unidos eh, en un solo tic. Eh, y yo os invito que, que llaméis a vuestro comercial para que os enseñe todo este material. Y por mi parte, así Sí, muy rápidamente, para no, para no agobiaros demasiado, pues mi labor era eso, presentaros el, el, el libro y que os dé ganas de llamar a vuestro comercial para que os lo enseñe. Muchísimas gracias, Santi. Todo muy claro, ¿eh? muy, muy bien, gracias. ¿eh? Voy a dar un, un minuto a la gente para que hagan preguntas. So, if anyone has a question or a comment, you can do so now. Um, the, the, the screen, on your screen you will see um, a box and you can write comments and questions there. So we'll just give you a couple of seconds um, to do that. Let's see. Okay, so the, uh, Santi, hay, algún, bueno, hay algunos comentarios. Uh, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias por la presentación tan clara. Um, todo muy claro, no tengo preguntas. Um, sí, hay un, there's a, there's a comment, hay un comentario sobre uh, la charla de, 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 de Lynn. And the person says, uh, thank you, Lynn, for the uh, very um, inspiring talk and for all the wow. really practical ideas that you've given us. Entonces, yo creo que la gente va a salir de aquí contenta. So, thank you. Thank you to Lynn to, uh, for that great talk, for, for, for those very practical ideas about how to prepare for exams and the countdown to exams. That was really, really good. Thank you for sharing all those ideas with us. Thank you to Santi for the very clear presentation. This course is packed full of really, again, practical um, it is. Yes. resources. And you, Lynn, have been involved in it very closely. You wrote the teacher's book for level one, so you know exactly what you're talking about. And um, So thank you both for that. And thank you to the audience for taking an hour and a half out of your evening to be here yes, with us. It's been a real pleasure. And I wish you all the very best for the rest of the course, for what's left of the course. Let's hope it can be the best end possible, given the year that it's been.